we welcome you back to our program today. A medical condition that impacts, unfortunately, way too many Americans these days is the disease of diabetes. Joining us today to talk about that is Dr. Michael Ulrich from the Endocrinology Department with Kaiser Permanente. And Doctor, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Good to have you with us today. So diabetes, uh, we hear more and more about that on the news. Uh, so-and-so passes away or so-and-so has had to have some kind of radical procedure and the news report will say as a result of their diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, even celebrities these days we're finding out are, are getting subject to that condition. How does someone know? Uh, is there a definitive test for diabetes? The uh, one, one problem with diabetes is it tends to be asymptomatic, at least in its early stages. Uh, the typical symptoms of being real thirsty, having to use the bathroom all the time, tend to come much, much later. So typically the, uh, it's diagnosed by a lab test, by usually me measuring blood sugar or hemoglobin A1C mm -hmm. um, in the doctor's office, uh, either fasting or non-fasting. But it's something that does have to be screened. Uh, or else you could easily miss it until it's later stages. Well, most of our doctors, uh, two or three times a year, send us, say, go to the lab and get your labs done. Mm -hmm. And all these mysterious things come back on a piece of paper, and usually they talk about things like cholesterol, and uh, normally they probably won't talk about sugar if, it's not, if they don't see a problem. Mm -hmm. Is that usually the case with most regular family doctors? It, generally, that they'll screen for it. I mean, the, yes, you may not, the, the patient may not be aware of it, but, but it should be something that's screened just routinely, at least yeah. once a year on your yeah. routine physical exam. Right. Yeah. And normally a doctor won't say anything about it unless, unless there's, something there's a problem there. Correct. In which case, I guess, then there's follow-up testing to, make, to, to reconfirm? It, it, absolutely, yeah. It should always be tested. Your blood sugar should be tested on two different occasions uh, to be sure that the diagnosis is accurate. Um, but yes, it, it, should, it should always be confirm, confirmed with a secondary test. All right. Like a lot of things, I know there are risk factors involved. Um, mm -hmm. I guess some might be hereditary, but some would be lifestyle choices. It, exactly. The, the, the uh, risk factor is really divided into two. The, the main uh, risk factor is genetics. If you have a parent or a sibling with, uh, with diabetes, that puts you at risk. Right. Um, the other is lifestyle. Uh, People who are overweight, people who are sedentary, uh, those increase your risk for, for diabetes. Mm -hmm. And those two, the genetics and the uh, lifestyle factors, interplay with each other. Like every other doctor, diet and exercise, diet and exercise, diet and exercise. Real important for probably most medical conditions, I guess. Correct. Some things. There's, there's good reason for that. Some things you may get just because of nasty things running around your body anyway. Sure. But a lot of things are, to some extent, preventable by all of that. We've heard the term pre-diabetes. Um, well, that would be when that test starts to get up to that middle questionable section, maybe? Exactly, exactly. So some doctors will use pre-diabetes or early diabetes or borderline um, when, when this sort of elevated blood sugar without really the diagnosis of diabetes is coupled with high blood pressure and cholesterol problems that will often be called metabolic syndrome. Mm. Um, these are, are uh, signs that you are, have the potential to develop full-blown diabetes, mm -hmm. and commonly, without it being checked, um, it, will, it will develop into, into diabetes in the future, and there's specific diagnostic criteria for yeah. pre-diabetes. I think one of the tests I've heard some people have had to take is they make them drink some kind of sugary liquid, yeah. and then they test, and then they drink it again, and they test them again, and that's Correct. one of the more definitive tests than the annual blood test, I guess. Right. It's called a glucose tolerance test. Yeah. It's often one of the, it's a confirmatory test. So right. if you have some abnormal follow screening up. test. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Type 1 and type 2. We understand that we, we, some, have, some have said type 1 is juvenile onset and type 2 is adult onset, although now we're finding, I guess, a lot of younger people are coming up with Type 2. Type 2 and vice versa. Older people can get type 1, so that is why they, they no longer call it juvenile and adult onset. Right, it's 1 and 2. Exactly, yeah. The, the, the type 1 is more commonly seen in children. It's only about 5% of diabetics who have type 1. Mm -hmm. um, and those people will always be on insulin. They require insulin in order to live. The and that's their body doesn't produce insulin the, or enough. Exactly. The body doesn't produce insulin at all. Mm -hmm. So in type 2, uh, type 2 patients, the pancreas does produce insulin. Um, it doesn't process it correctly, et cetera, and so the blood sugars are not well controlled. Um, and generally, those are people who are uh, older. Mm -hmm. However, again, older people can get type one as well. So I would think I would think type change. one would be the, would be the prime candidate for me, like a pump type situation, since they're going to have to have that continuous, rather than daily injections. They have a continuous pump flow, substituting right. for their pancreas, basically. Exactly, pumps are pumps are great for many type ones, not all, but uh, right, we use right. them quite a bit. Um, obviously, you're working on uh, treatment, you're working on prevention and treatment as, as an endocrinologist. Right. Um, does everybody end up on insulin? Not at all. 
So people who are type, again, type 1s always run insulin. Right, but type 2s. Type 2s, uh, you know, if you control your, your diabetes well, uh, there are a host of oral medications that you can use for it. Um, many people um, have, have an attitude, I'm going to end up on insulin anyway, why do I bother with this? Uh, and, and that's simply not true. Mm -hmm. If you keep uh, between your medications and lifestyle choices, if you keep things under control, uh, you can easily be managed with oral medication. Right, right, especially if it's tested for early, and again, that's what that was. Exactly. Seeing your doctor on a regular basis and getting your blood sugar tested at least on a yearly basis, if not more often. Correct, would be, correct. And if you have maybe preconditions or family history or some of these other risk factors, yeah. maybe twice a year wouldn't be Absolutely. If you have risk factors, yeah, exactly. If you have risk factors or, or the early diabetes or prediabetes. Get we talk about diet and exercise. We talk about uh, insulin possibly and other medications. What about the research in this area? I, I just would imagine lots of research is going on to try to come up with better, not only cures, but better prevention methods. Correct. It, it, it's a huge problem in, in our country today. The, the progression of diabetes um, is a huge, it costs a, a fortune for our country. Um, it is, uh, so it is a hot topic in research. There, there's huge amounts of money going into research mm -hmm. on diabetes, both in prevention and in, and in further therapies. Mm -hmm. And I guess a lot of us probably right down the street from us at UCI. <laughs> Correct. Right down the road there. Um, if you could kind of boil it all down, maybe one of the most important aspects of, of treating diabetes from a physician standpoint? The, a key thing, the key thing in, in treating diabetes, honestly, is education. Yes, there are medications you can take. Some people are on insulin and have to make proper choices, but the key thing is understanding what your diabetes is, um, how you treat it. Um, many people have to do self-monitoring and, and to be able to use those, those numbers, what your blood sugars are, to make decisions on that. Um, so education as to what, what are the proper foods and, and, and you know, activity patterns, et cetera. Yeah. That type of thing is, is key. So education is, is the cornerstone because diabetes is really managed by the patient as opposed to just the patient and doctor. I right. can't just give you a set of pills and say, go on your way. You really have to understand what, right. what to do with it. Responsibility. We're hearing more and more, of course, all these discussions going on in Washington right now. And one of the big parts that they're all saying about that is prevention certainly should be a big part of any whatever whatever comes down the line from medical. Correct, correct. And obviously at Kaiser, that's a big part of your whole philosophy of the Kaiser Permanente group. Correct, we have a, we have a cadre of patients. We try to detect people in their, in their pre-diabetes phase, I mean, before they actually get over conditions. Right. And we start with classes, with education, with trying to motivate lifestyle changes, um, which has been shown to actually reduce the incidence of diabetes by up to 60% yeah. if you do proper, yeah. proper choices. You know, it's the same thing that we keep hearing for cancer and heart disease and stroke and everything else is, Exercise, get out there at least a half hour every day. Mm -hmm. uh, watch what you eat, control your food, and uh, right, control you your know, intake. It's, yeah, uh, watch your food choices. The, the good food in, the bad food not go in, and uh, all those other good things. A little bit about yourself, doctor. Uh, where'd you get your medical training? Uh, I went to medical school at USC. Ah, uh, you did my internal medicine, internal medicine residency at uh, the Wadsworth VA up in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and back to USC for my fellowship. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I've been with Kaiser for 11 years. Wow. Must be working for you. Yeah, so far, so good. Very good. Yeah. We thank you for coming on the program today and giving us some good information about uh, diabetes, certainly a problem that affects many people out there. And again, some good tips coming our way from Dr. Ulrich and from uh, the folks over there at Kaiser Permanente. We'll be coming right back with more right after this. Stay with us. Like to go out today somewhere new. I'm on my way, you come too. We'll find a place in the sun. In the sun. to shine in the sun in the sun we believe good health belongs to everyone that it's more than some card you keep in your wallet it's the air we breathe the food we eat the communities we live in we're kaiser permanente and we're here to spread health 